Here we go. Oh, I don't think the music's playing with it. I don't think the music's playing. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Podcast with Frosty, edition number six tonight. We are back at it with a, uh, with a new game that I haven't played on stream yet. Well, it's been out for maybe, I think, a year or two now. But it is told to Tohu Luna Nights, made by the fantastic Team Ladybug, and is honestly a really great, like, if you don't know what it's about, it's a Metroidvania based around the characters from Tohu, uh, from Tohu Embodiment of Starlight Devil, which is seven, I believe. I'm not the most hardcore Tohu fan now. <laughs> but, anyway, it's a really fun game, I advise everybody to check it out, and if you're not sold on it after my little spiel here, well, I'll let the gameplay speak for itself in just a second. Let me just get things tweeted out real quick. But anyway, anyway, I have a few topics already set out for tonight. The main things going on about it will be what is Tohu itself in all of its entirety? Like, you know, what's, uh, like, what is it really? Like, what's the fandom like? And what, like, really makes it stand as a hallmark of, uh, of, like, uh, of games, really? Like, why is it so well known? I will be talking about the, like, I can't speak. I will be talking about the music. Not only just Tohu, but my own experiences with, with, like, music, both in band and, like, rhythm games, for instance. And finally, as that note, rhythm games in its itself, the cabinets, the arcade machines, everything that I've done like that. But for now, here, we'll get things going, shall we? Now I, this is not a blind run. I have played this game a good, a good bit before. I'm trying just to be, you know, casually playing through. You know, not gonna linger too much on many talking points. I'm probably just, you know, just gonna run it through, see if how, if I can finish it at least all in one stream tonight. Now, once again, you don't need to have any background knowledge with Tohu games at all, but it is nice to get the general sense of the world a lot better if you do know it. <laughs> the time has finally come. Now, my world will begin. Are you ready, Sakuya? As we fade into black. Here we go. <sighs> where? Where am I? Sakuya? You can hear me, Sakuya. This is my space. This is Lady Romilia's voice. What do you mean by space? This is a magic space I based on Jim Sokyo. It's exactly the same as the real thing. Even the weather is the same. Patch didn't have to go that far. This isn't Jin Sokyo? That's right. Overcome the various tests you've prepared and make your way to where I wait. This is another library of game you've created, Lady Romilia. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Oh yes, I put a limit on your powers as well. A limit? Do you mean my powers to stop time? Of course. A new game isn't fun if you're already powerful. Hey there, Alex. Always nice to see you around. You shouldn't be able to use your powers very well now. Okay. It's all Satya. Entertain me. Hmm. Let's say this won't be a straightforward game. Yo, what the hell is this game? I was thinking the bullet hell one. So, this actually is the perfect transition to my first stream topic. Tohu, it, uh, the genre of Tohu itself is known as a Danmaku shooter, or bullet hells. That's the most common medium and is the main series games that you usually see. There are 17 main series games, and the, recent, the most recent one, Wily Beast and something creature, I don't remember the name of it, but Tohu 17 is actually on the Steam Marketplace. It is all created by one man known as Zoon, by his one man team known as Team Shanghai Alice. The great thing, no, the great thing to know about the Tohu fanbase is that this is a fan game. 
Now, how could a fan game be monetized with the name and assets of the characters themselves? The main thing about it is that Zune is very, very liberal with what he uh, with with his copyright. He bought his own IP. He bought his own like he has all the rights to it, and he has uh, gone on record to say. As long as you don't use any direct assets from the games themselves and don't make anything in the same bold hell genre, you're completely free to make whatever games that you want with his own intellectual property. And so as such, I am playing a uh, I'm playing Luna Knights, which is a Metroidvania once again by Team Ladybug. This takes place from the characters of Seven, embodiment of Scarlet Devil, and the main character that we play as here is Sakia Izioi. The head maid of the Scarlet Devil Mansion, which, as some people might know, is like well, due to memes and such, you might know her as Knife Dio or Girl Dio. <laughs> she can, or she, her powers are usually to be able to stop time and throw an inordinate amount of knives, which we'll get to cover in just a little bit here. What a great creator! And hi, Catarot. Nice to see you. But yes, yes. The main premise of the Tohu games is that you are in the world of Gen Sokyo, where human, or where there's not many humans, but there is known as yokai, or what you know, ancient, or the ancient, uh, ancient folklore of, J of Japan. So like kitsune, onis, anything falls in that basket, and basically almost every character that's not a human is some special type of yokai. The ones in the embodiment of Scarlet Devil are vampires, and Sakia herself is one of the few humans in the series. Girl Dio? Yep, you'll see that soon enough, Alex. I'm gonna see if I can't finish the whole game here. Let's get to the gameplay. So, well, you can't see the attack and jump button, but you can easily see that I move around with just like the arrow keys, left and right. I can crouch with down. Oh. Let me just skip past this. And for like, the default controls are press X to, uh, to jump, hold X to glide around, and you press Z to attack, and that's where you throw your knives. The main thing to note about Luna Knights is that if you see in the top left, you have a few bars. HP is your health points, if it goes to zero, you do die. And MP is your actual, like, is basically how you attack. Anytime I throw knives, it goes down in a quantity of three, because I'm throwing three. And if I'm out of it, then I actually can't attack at all. I can throw it in a myriad of different directions, especially with like how like however I'm shooting. And the cool thing about it is that any knives that land in walls or on the floors you can see, I can pick back up to restore my own MP. Now, the main mechanic, especially since you are playing as the girl Dio his ability to stop time and control time. I don't have powers to control time yet, as stated by Lady Romilia in the intro, but if I hold down my attack button, this red circle appears, and I can slow down time at least. Let me get past this uh, things here. What an amazing fan game, the pixel art work is stunning. It's super fantastic. I think it I think it won like Tohu game like a game jam back in 2018, I think? And it even got, you know, it has a whole sign off from Zune, the creator himself, and such. But anyway, anyway. We'll get back to this. What was that? I think I've seen that shape somewhere. We'll get on to that. We'll get on to that. Now, anytime we defeat enemies, they're gonna drop gems, as you saw there. And if I pause, you'll see at the bottom, I get gems. What they all do, I'll explain a little later. Oops. Now, here's an important mechanic that's both in the Tohu games and in Luna Knights. Something called grazing. Suddenly approaching an enemy or enemy fire is a graze. You can steal basically enemy stats. Well, not stats exactly, but you'd steal or but if you get close enough to an enemy without being hit by them, you'll get a graze. Which will give you these blue little circle, uh, these blue little P icons, and what it does is that it both it restores your stat, your vital stats, both HP, MP, and we'll get onto time later. Well, as long as you don't get hit, of course. You can only graze like uh, about once. Uh, you can only graze once from each enemy, but that is how you restore your HP. Because unless you have items, you have no other way of naturally restoring HP unless from 
certain points in the map itself. So it's so like a cool way for risk reward style because that's also how it works in to in the main state Tohu games. You have to be able to know how to play on the knife's edge of grazing bullets to both power yourself up and for a lot of people getting those high scores. Um, you're Hideo no Aki, right? Oh, hello. For non-Tohu fans, Akiu, I don't remember the species of yokai she is, but her own powers is basically to remember everything, like, is basically she knows the entire history of the world. She has the ability to, like, uh, to, like, remember everything, and even erase parts of history from the entirety of everybody's memories and such. But, uh, she wasn't an embodiment of Scarlet Devil, but she serves a vital role here. You always selling me in this game here, Cruz. Well, let me tell you, if you've never played a Tohu game before, there's never a bad place to start, though there are like though if you wanted to play the main Danmaku game, I do have my own suggestions for that especially. Because, well, I mean, they're hard, and some of them are definitely a lot easier than others for newcomers to the series. But here, let's keep this going. I'll talk while I'm adventuring through the map. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I mean, what are you doing in a place like this? There's no particular reason. I'm tired, so I'm resting. Oh. Something feels off. She must be an imposter waiting your memory space created. It must be fate we met here. If you would like, shall I make a record? Oh, right. Your specialty is keeping records. I don't know what will happen, so can you do me the favor? I understand. Then please make a phone call from that telephone booth. Telephone booth? The green bot's over there, please try it. Hello? Huh? I hear Aju's voice from the spots. Don't worry about the details. If you make a phone call like this, you can make a record. Please use it often. Okay, sure, thank you. I'll use this again. Aku here serves as our save points. Anytime you find a Tolbu phone, I just walk right past it. Like so, it will automatically save the game for us. So if I ever die, then I, this is where I'll go back to. The Tohu fan music swamp, I've seen a bit on YouTube and I've played it on repeat. Well, a lot of like good mimetic music as well is Tohu music famously. Chances are you've probably heard of Bad Apple, correct? Well, Bad Apple itself is a Tohu fan remix of an extra stage from I think Sits? I want to say Sits, but I don't remember exactly. You and Owen was her is another famous one, of course. As well as a few noticeable others. Um, Marissa stole the precious thing. Cerno's perfect math class. Everything like that. Bad Apple, I love that song. Yep, it is a Tohu. It is a Tohu remix. And if you are interested, I'll actually be singing that on stream for my debut, at least. Of course, I could just do acapella to it if I wanted to a little bit here. Here, I'm trying to demonstrate, see if I get close enough to these enemies, I graze, and all of those blue, or, and all of the blue converts into my health, and if I spend some of it real quick, my MP. You can only graze from each enemy, or you don't only graze a certain amount from each enemy, so you can't just keep farming by standing close to people. You have to keep, or you have to graze and then get out with what you've gotten from that. Yeah, Bad Apple is a Tohu san. Believe it or not. And there's definitely a lot more that, uh, that people definitely have probably heard around that don't even recognize it's a Tohu san. Bad Apple, especially for us rhythm gamers, it is a hallmark because you almost see that all the time, no matter what. Wow, so delicious! Now my HP and MP have fully recovered. These soda machines around here are what you use to recover your stats around. Note that they are not save points, so even if you get your stats back and die, you'll restart back at the last save point you went at, which is a main vital thing to take note. Because a lot of the time, unless you're going up to a boss, the game, uh, the game wants to stagnate the different points, save points, and soda machines. That way you're still on your toes.
And here we have Natori, who is a Kappa. A Kappa is known in Japanese folklore especially so. But you may, uh, but at least in the Tohu fandom, they are known as mechanics with their great big arms. Because usually Kappas in regular Japanese mythology were great pranksters and usually had really big arms to do nasty things. Uh, look up them taking, you know, look up cucumbers, I believe, or, uh, people's essences. I don't want to go into detail about it. It's weird folklore. <laughs> but for here, we'll see what she's doing. Well, the flight test was a success. You are Natori, right? What is this vehicle? This? It's a robot I made. Huh? Anyways, human, what are you doing here? This Natori seems to be an imposter, too. But there must be a reason she exists. Let's try talking to her. I have my reasons. And what about you? I guess you could say I'm flight testing this while doing some business. Business? Yep, business, for instance. What do you think about this watch? A watch? Sorry, but I already have a favorite watch. I don't need another one. You should take it. You can't use your powers right now, right? How, how did you know? If you use this, you can control your power to stop time. It has some strong magic. You should be able to use your power again with this. Control my power. For the time being, all you have for free is a sign of our acquaintance. I have a feeling only you can use this. Hmm, I guess I'll take it if it's free. Press the stop by a stop time button stop time, which I, PC is A, I believe. Stop time. Okay, I got it. Ah, darn it, its theme went away. The best thing about Tohu is that each stage has its own theme in the Danmaku series, and as a byproduct of that, each character mid bo uh, uh, for being bosses in their own series always has their own theme to usually go on with it. Notorious herself is... Uh, um, Yatagawa Kappa, Candid Friend. Or like, for example, for more mimetic value, Sakiya's is the famous Knight of Knights, which you've definitely probably heard if you ever played any rhythm games worth yourself. But the main, like, but the main thing to go with it is, um... Like, all of the characters have different themes, which are great, and also, if you do come by for debut day, or actually when I get her, when I get to visit her shop later, I'll do a little preview of Candid Friend, because I actually know the lyrics to that too. Well, fan lyrics, but it's still, you know, a good tribute to the song. This theme slaps? All Tohu themes you always slap, I gotta say. But here, we now have access to our third and final most vital resource. Right above, if you see me kind of looking over towards it, in the very middle of the screen you'll see that 100 right there which is our time meter. If I press A, you can see this. I can control my power to manipulate time. It's not to the full extent, there's nothing I can do. It's annoying to depend on a tool, but I guess I'll have to use this for now. Time is stopped to everybody but me. Moving around the plates this bar, and that 18 over my head is how many knives I can throw and stop time, which uses up time as well. Note that it doesn't use my MP at all when I throw my knives, it just uses time, and I can still recover my MP off of it. So this is a creative way of seeing how do I want to balance my resources. If I don't have time, if I don't have time but I have MP, I'll just have to fight in normal time. But if I have no MP and I do have time, at the very least I can throw all these knives and as you can see, they stay all together in stopped motion until time actually comes back, which can set up devious traps for your enemies. And once again, grazing will also get you bad time as you see there. Now here's a big note. You see the numbers above the enemy's heads there? That is a different type of graze. There is blue graze, which is when you're, when you're grazing enemies in normal time, and pink graze, which I'll showcase here. When in pink graze, you can see how much graze you can still sap from your enemies, but all that you get from pink graze is more time and more MP. You actually don't get health back, which means that if you actually want to, you know, keep your health topped off, you have to fight the enemies in normal time. You can't just cheese everything and stop the time. I should save actually real quick. 
Oh jeez, maybe I shouldn't run into the enemies repeatedly too. But Zaruaro! Tokyo Tomare! But for instance, going back to that music point, the current theme that's playing, I believe, is Luna Clock Luna Dial, which is one of two themes of our head maid herself, Satya Izioi. I see here. I can just plan my knives, and I can have them all destroy my enemies as I please. And of course, all, like, besides health, MP and time will restore on their own. So, if I'm not doing anything, they'll re restore on their own, or I can of course just keep trying to graze enemies. I'd say as I take two direct clean shots. Ah, you jumped back. Ah, oh, whatever. I know this game, I'm not gonna do too bad with it. Now, I just found a secret wall real quick. I found a special item which increases my MP by 10. If you look here on the map, you can see that this will be the whole map with the white pinning dots showing where I am. Along with that little nifty thing right above, if you kinda see, is all the collectibles you can get in the game, divided by the area. We'll go into that, alright, it'll be much more prevalent once I do find more of them. But the main ones, as with any good Metroidvania, is that you need items to progress, and things like keys to progress, key items. So I'll get upgrades in time, I'm just gonna graze a little bit while I get some time. I say as I run into him when it stopped. A bathtub here. If I stop time in the water, the water solidifies and I won't be able to move. I should be careful. Keynote. Yep, this is a major thing with many of the maps in the game to where a lot of it to where mechan uh, visits and mechanics will work as is. Though when something stop time, it stays suspended. Water also stays suspended in stop time, meaning I can walk right on top of it. Or in a more extreme case, if I want to show this out. If I stop time in the water, I actually can't move. I'm kind of stuck in the water itself. <laughs> so it's very key to take note of, okay, is there anything that I need to note of in this room or scene before I move on? Yep, this is just the time thing I was talking about again. Oh, I don't have the items yet for this, so I'm taking dumb damage. So wait, is the save point this way? It's been a little bit since I've played. Yes, there is a save point this way. Hello? Is this Natori? What did you pick up? What are you talking about? I'm the one who installed that phone. You, you are? Is the clock working? Yes, it's very useful. I'm glad to hear that. By the way, the store is ready, so come by when you have some time. What? I said I have some things that might be helpful, so come shop at my store. Natori is our shopkeeper for the game, and I'll explain how she works later on. Love hearing you introduce the game, very soothing. I'm doing what I can. I gave you that clock, right? I don't have any money, though. You have jewels. I'll buy them for you. From you. Jewels? Oh, the ones I picked up on the road. Those are precious resources, they have a lot of value. Hmm, I'll stop by soon. Okay, next time I actually do visit Notori's shop, I'll do a small, small, small cover of Candid Friends. I'll maybe do a verse or two at the very least. I want to save most of it for the debut itself. Yes, Tohu is such a span- like, fan games, fan music words, whole entire circles and such like that are all dedicated to Luna Knight. Oh yeah, let me introduce this first too. It's an achievement for it, but if you ever take any of the sodas, you can deposit the sodas right into the vending machines for 10 free gold and even an achievement if you put them all in eventually. But Tohu itself is a huge all-encompassing genre because if you look up like any type of music and put like any genre of music and then put Tohu, right next to it, 
you're going to find something on it. You want some like nice smooth jazz? Oh, how did I get hit? So who's got that for you? You want, you know, maybe it's like some like real hardcore J rock? So who's got that for you? Do you want Tohu Eurobeat to listen to? I'm not kidding, there's like one hour mixes on YouTube of Tohu Eurobeat. It's all over the place, and for good reason, because once again, since the creed, or since Zoom said everybody has full wide creative license to do as they please with, the, uh, with Tohu itself, just as long as it's, you know, not a direct work using official assets and such. They have free reign on it. I mean that it's super super oh I can't wait a second. It's super super fun to see how creative people get with re or fan remixes, fan games, and everything of that sort. I think there's a save point underneath here. I'm gonna allow it to come for you. The Dome fan base is something every game should aspire for. Definitely so, definitely so. We're all, we've always been in the background especially, that's not a bad thing because like, especially with like, how much like, oh it's like Toad had its biggest boom, maybe like back in like, yeah maybe back in like t t 2012 or so, you know like, especially with like Bad Apple and such, having its big boom and we've just been in the background so it hasn't been anything too special we've always seen besides, um, Wily Beast and, uh, Wily Beast of uh, Toad 17 and such. Ooh, sliding knife. Now I can actually slide on the ground, which is super, super convenient. Ah, too far, too far. Okay, slow time. Oh, is the Weepy wasn't a bad apple in 2012? Check. I mean, we've all been there, and especially, like, once again, through my later point tonight, when rhythm games have, like, how, like, when rhythm games divide things up by, like, genres, like, K-pop, remixes, full songs, and Tohu, and most of them, like, DDR and such, just has its own genre by itself, that's a testament to just, like, how it's standing its own test of time. Bad Apple is a serious bop. No matter how you listen to it. Unfortunately, I don't know the Japanese words at all. I'm gonna have to sing, uh, they had your English, you know, the one covered by Christina V and such. But hey, it's still something that I get to connect and have fun with. Alright, so I tell you it's been a, getting a big enough boom, because at least on Switch in Japan consoles. Oh, okay, Japan Switch only is. Ah, oh, I still got hit. I'm getting hit again. Don't do that, Cruz. Uh, Toe Spell, uh, to, um, Spell Bubble is a, just released on Japanese, which is not too long ago, which is a rhythm game in and of itself. Um, Tohu Cannonball is a Mario Party gacha game that I actually played a bit of myself, that came out very recently. And of course, there's a few others that are always coming, oh, there's always gonna be Tohu fan games and fan circles all around. Some of my favorites to listen to are like Active Meats. Who, do, who provide a good mix of both high swing tempo, big, uh, uh, swing jazz, and also full orchestra remixes. And, like, Tom Music, who always does piano and violin covers and such like that. And of course, all the other fans, small circles, so like, uh, most of the fan lyrics that I know are from a channel called Lyric Alive. Who is a English, uh, who is an English YouTube channel that does Tohu fan covers? Yeah, I'll be fine though. And so, like, getting that reach everywhere, like the, the different genres, or like the different parts of the world, especially, is super huge. I mean, heck, even for us virtual YouTubers, Tohu is a big thing for any Hello Live fans. Um, both Shirakami Fubuki and, or more notably, Hosho Marin is an, uh, is an avid Tohu fan, and just recently pairing up with both Beat Mario, who did the pres uh, who did the famous things such as Help Me Aaron, or Marissa Stole the Precious Thing, I believe, uh, actually have their own album set to Tohu tracks and songs and everything, which is super amazing. Also, I finally got the red key, which is a nice shortcut tool. 
once a year. I can't double jump yet, so I can't go that way. Uh, stop time. Don't get hit. Thank you. But it's right, just once again, seeing how Tohu just reaches all around, whatever genre, rhythm games, Danmaku itself, you can see Metroidvania here. Um, I know on Switch right there, I, I, spell, I think it was a Spell Bubble, is that new one in Japan that is rhythm and like, you know, at that match three, like, sh bubble shooter or so, stuff like that. We have Sky Arena, uh, Sky Arena The Climax, which is a 3D fighting game, kind of like, Dragon Ball, I kind of like the Dragon Ball Xenoverses. We have um, Gen Genso Sky Drift, which is like Mario Kart Double Dash or Kind Out Cloud. We have Genso, Wa uh, Genso Wanderer Reloaded, which is something kind of like akin to Mystery Dungeons on PC, which I might stream another time. It reaches everywhere for Crying Out Loud. And I'm not necessarily complaining, I'm just saying it's such, like, it's so cool that it encompasses everywhere. Hello! How are you? Hitori, what is it this time? I forgot to tell you this, but... I installed a vending machine. Did you notice? A vending machine? I improved a machine that falls through from a parallel universe. You can drink some delicious juice. It's perfect for recovering strength and magic. Try it if you want. Oh, don't forget to throw out empty cans. Oh, that bot's where the drink came out. I've already tried it. That's good. I think the boss fight is soon, but if you want the shop, come again anytime. Boss fight? Bye bye. Anytime that you see a room with both the save point and the soda machine, you can expect the boss coming up. And here we'll have our boss of area one tonight. Uh, if game doesn't freeze. Thank you, game. Stop there. Oh, you're welcome, Han Meiling, gatekeeper of the Scarlet Devil Mansion, also known as Chidoku or Chinese within the fandom, and notably an avid sweeper. I won't you take I won't let you take one step further. What are you doing, Meiling? I'm very sorry. These are orders by Lady Amelia. I see, so you are real. If you want to pass, you must defeat me first. I usually wouldn't have any problems with you. This might be a slightly difficult fight for my current situation. But even Mario said there's no need to go easy on you. Prepare yourself. Oh, actually, I think the music might pop up in the bottom left corner, so let me move myself. Magic! It will pop up in the bottom left. That, of course, is unnecessary. Come at me. So, both uh, both Sakuya and Meiloin serve under Lady Romelia, the head, like, the head of the Star Wars Double Mansion. Though, by extension, as the head maid, uh, as the head maid, Sakuya is the, mm, the boss of Meiloin. Yep, here we go, Shanghai Alice in 1884. So Meiloin is our first boss of the game, and she teaches a very important lesson, both in grazing, and also, like, trying to stop time, I say as I'm missing. Any frontal attacks is going to just be blocked by her. So you have to actually stop time and get around her. If you actually want to hit her, unless she's already attacking. And then she has slow enough attacks to where you can easily, I say as I run into it, you can easily graze off of them. Kratzy move, Kratzy move, yes I did. I have enough knowledge with OBS and a little bit of screen magic to go with that. I'm doing bad. Come on now, Mayor, now please don't kill me. Hi, Akane VR, how are you? I shouldn't be talking while I'm about to die to a boss. Ooh, Coast Grays. How are you doing, Akane? Watching you fight Mayoin. Uh, that's too close of a graze. Uh, I really didn't want to have a continue on the freaking first boss. I was playing this game the other day, too. I did some stupid shots anyway. Alright, attempt number two. Just abuse the knives. So as you can obviously see in the top right corner, that is where you'll see the boss helps whenever they pop up. 
She has whopping 1,000 health to begin with, anyway. Get that perfect grace. Get the knives next. I thought I slid past that. Please, we go under her here and then just use all my time. Please, is introducing me to the world of Tohu games. Oh lord. Oh, it is kind of my stream topics for tonight. Plus, if I. Well, I can at least talk about Tohu for the first two parts of it, especially since it is going to be. Since I did have it out to be. Tohu itself, and then rhythm, uh, and then like, like song genres, whatever. So I guess I could have an encompass for both parts. Rhythm games will be the last part of it overall. Ugh, she's gone. I'll have to use the last stand. Okay, Mayling. Shoot <laughs> time. Okay, never mind. I thought I could have gotten in slow time, but never mind. He's done die, Cruz. Good. Like three years ago, I played the boat out Tohu, and every death was like half a half a shot. It was real bad. Oh, Akane, wh which one were you playing, girl? Because depending on which one you were playing, you could easily have a bad time. If it wasn't Mountain of Faith and you don't play Don Maku, you're not going to be signing yourself up to stay away very long. You lose, Meiling. How frustrating. Let me pass. It can't be helped. But Satya san. What? I don't know if this will be of any advice, but I'm not your only enemy. So um, please be careful. I'll remember that. Well, it was uh Boho, Don Matthew, it is the same thing, Akane, but like which which Tohu game was it? Cause they are its seventeen main series games. Was there any characters that you, you recognize here? Because that would be seven, which is ESOD, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. And here, every area will have a boss. The maiden in the pot watch of blood. Oh, yeah, Tuck has three, three, three themes. I've got Manger Dora in the area. So, you can see by that sign there, it tells me there's enemies hiding. Kind of hiding in that little pixel brush. I can't necessarily hit him until he comes out, but if I stop time, I can clearly see where he is. I can just kind of skirt past. It's good, because these little budgets are annoying. We got the laptop, it'll have it on there. Welcome to Area 2, inside the Struggle Double Mansion itself. Each area is denoted by a different color palette anytime you enter it. And here we have the fairy maids of Scarlet Double Mansion, who work under Sakia. And a lot and a lot of dangerous objects that control you as well. This is when you need to make use of either stop time or slow time especially. So once again, a lot of this game will revolve around how you can manipulate time to your advantage here. Good, good, good. Now remember, you can graze off of both enemies and bullets separate by themselves. So depending on the situation, you might just want to not focus on the enemy, but focus on getting past the bullets. I say as I run into them, but like, just making sure that you aren't being hit by the bullets. Ah, shoot. I'm taking a lot of dumb damage. Oh, did I not discover the warp? I didn't discover the warp point back in the first area. I should do that. These here are warp gates, which I can travel freely in between the different areas at. I thought I discovered it in the first area, but it's freaking right above the vending machine. Like, right up, like, like, over here. Um, frozen. Darn it. But yeah, right over here, to the very left of my head. I freaking didn't get it. Well, if this was a speedrun stream, it would be incredibly cursed already, because I missed it. So let's just go ahead and grab that bat real quick. 
That'll let me get to the shop as well. Oh shoot, I have to climb around in the whole way. That was a close phrase. Now the main thing about the Don Maku games especially is that you have to make like something that you won't be seeing here in the nights is the use of like bombs or of course extra lives. It being a strict metro bit and metroidvania, you just have your HP and your MP and such like that. Nothing else too special about it. Mountain of Faith, yep. Mountain of Faith is one of the better beginner friendly games, I will say. Though of course if you if you didn't have any Danmatu experience, you're not going to see much of a difference. We got those over there. Because Mountain Faith still is, you know, a Danmatu... Uh, uh, it's still a Danmatu game. Still is a main series Tohu game. You're not going to have too much fun with it if you didn't have any experience prior. Let's see, straight shot. Yep, straight shot back over. Alright, I can do this. Freaking, I forgot the button. I called myself on it and I did forget about the Mandragora. This is the to Lunatic mode because I was a mad lad. Yeah, I don't know if you played any Danmachi before, Kane, but that is a big, big problem. Big problem. Because you are signing yourself up for some pain. Especially if you don't know a few nice tips and tricks for Tohu that you could really take advantage of. Or, you know. Well, it's Tohu, what am I talking about? You're going to have a bad time anyway. Let's get all this graze real quick. Look at the map. I could go straight or I could go around. I keep heading straight. I think like the speedruns for this game right now sit at only like 19 or 20 minutes, which is a incredible mad lab time in of itself. I'm just hoping I can finish between like the two, three hours that I get on stream here, because I am taking it at a pretty leisurely pace. It was mad lad mode, and then I was ten shots in, and I was like, yeah, okay, the stream's done. Definitely so. Here we go. I have the other warp point, so I can actually go to it now. Oh, and I didn't. I forgot to get one important item as well. Well, I guess I'm going all the way around. But if I'm going all the way up and down, then I guess I can visit Notorious Shop, and I can do a little bit of Candid Friend while we're there. Uh-oh. What's wrong? What's wrong, Akane? Tell me what's up, girl. I'm speeding through and I'm forgetting some important items along the way, which can go on the way. Yes, I can just jump straight up. Perfect. Here we go, my first active item, which is a stun knife. Takes 10 MP, but shots in a straight vertical line up and down. And is, it costs 10 MP to use, or I think 10 seconds of stop time. And it only costs one knife too instead of the three, meaning, oh, it's super powerful when you want it to be. But here. Welcome. I have a lot of items here. If you're not going to shop, can you turn the watch? Okay, okay. So, this is the shop for the game. Oh, I'm frozen. Fantastic. Uh, give it just a moment here. Magic! I need to disappear off air for two seconds. Part of my computer was freezing on me. I'm gone, where did I go? <laughs> Let's test this connection one more time. Uh. 
inside a way, boy, inside a way. I'm testing these waters again. One, two, cha cha. I'm back. I'm smaller. Let's get a little bit bigger now. Here we go. But this is the shop of the game. The toy shop. The way that it works is that when you kill enemies, you get jewels. Which you convert straight to money and you can buy things such as extra knives if they don't stop time. Extra time on the gauge. Health or magic consumables or time consumables. Or extra tickets to just call the shop wherever instead of having to go back and forth. Or even extra experience points, but that's, that's a whole 100 grand. Now, why isn't it just an instant money to kill? It's because each of the gems that you have actually improves your stats by a little bit. Depending on the rarity of them, such as increasing grades of effect, how much your, your mana or time regenerates over time, or even as much as improving your own base attack slots with that, or such like this. So you can, you know, kind of have it out however you want. For me right now, I do like my stats, so what I'll look to get is one shop ticket, and then I'll be on my way for now, because I can't buy anything else of note. The stats aren't too noticeable, but hey, it's still passives, and there's no reason for me to sell, uh, sell away all of my gems right now. I didn't hit checkout. Screw it, I'll just sell a few more. I'll take the shop ticket poisonatory. I'll take two in case I need consumables for now. Oh, and it's swooping around. This is perfect, actually. Catch me and I'll be your candid friend. This hope is the greeting I hope to send. Kindly you and me your pieces, friend. I'll take them apart and I'll build again. Oh, what's this? You turn this part here with a twist and it goes up in steam. Wow, I don't think much of magic itself, but I think what you do is a dream. Oh, I hide away, born side away, see me. They can't see me someday, will you reach out to me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got to try, no, I'm too shy to come out of the blue, even if it's you. I'm testing these waters again. I hide away, blindside away, see you where you can't see me. Someday will I reach out my arm to you, my friend. I've got to try, no, I'm too shy to come out of the blue, even if it's you. I'm testing these waters again. I've got to be more silent right now, because it is night, but hey, I still got this enough. I love the OST for Tohu, it's so good. Agreed there completely, Akane, agreed there completely. If I can listen to any type of music genre or so, Tohu is immediately on the top of my list. Yeah, I still don't have the ability to jump up, so we'll just keep moving. But anyway, anyway, any, anyway. For a part of that, Tohu music itself has definitely evolved through a good amount of time, but I'll explain a few memes as well. One thing that you'll always hear in many native Tohu tracks, oh, uh, especially, is a lot of, like, is... Well, once again, first and foremost, it was made by the one-man band, Team Shanghai Alice. Zoom, the madman himself. But the main thing with it is that you'll probably hear good meme in the fandom of Zoom Pits as well. What constitutes Zoom Pits exactly? Well, what Zoom Pits are are spelled trumpets with with you know Z U N in it, and it's basically the use of oh geez I'm kind of flipping around. Okay, I hope that's a little better now. But it's 
the use of uh, the extravagant use of the trumpets in many of the trance, especially for it. We'll definitely hear it in a lot more of the famous trance themselves. But there's too many good ones to always list off. I'll go off of my personal favorite ones though. The meme tracks themselves are obviously going to be a bop. Santa's perfect math class, Mercy sold the precious thing, etc, etc, etc. I'm in the middle of a bad spot, but I've got nice. Still took the hit though, don't it? Oh, I can't, I can't go here yet. Mercy stole the precious thing. Bad apple, of course, is just amazing in all regards. There's a game called Bots VR. Let me tell you, trying to work out to the to, to the to OSD is regret on hard mode. <laughs> you, my goodness, working out to to, to any Tohu OSD, you're asking for some pain right there, Akane. Not gonna lie, because with how high BPM some of the songs are, like you and Owen, Step Death to the Dead Princess, even by itself, etc., etc. At least from what I'm naming off of ESOD here. Those chats by themselves are already a fast tempo and that's not counting some of them like Night of Nights, etc, etc. Sorry, I can't carry you over my nuclear fusion. Utsio's theme, yes! Such a good theme too, and so addictive to listen to. Is there a secret in one of these walls, or am I imagining things? So I'm pretty sure there was a secret in one of them. Maybe Fusion is great as well. But I'm telling you, if you don't play rhythm games that much, Akane, you are missing out on the pain that should be like Bad Apple and such. Because, although it's not- oh, secret sound here. That's where it was. Although it's not the worst track, like in terms of BPM or such, just- Oh, yeah, it's on the other side. Just the fact of, like, how long it endears, and with, like, the BPM of it especially, or, like, you know, the beats of it, it runs itself very well to very, very hard charts in any rhythm game or so. And especially, you've probably heard a few of them. Quite famous story, like, once again, you and Owen was here, is it, uh, it's just a great one, great one, great one. Like you hear all the time. Trying to find some real good remixes of a few Tohu songs. Check out Night of Nights, of course. Sakia's premier theme, and one of the most famous ones. Or, once again, like I mentioned out to Alex before, get easily look up the meme song. Serna's Perfect Math Class is a remix. Marissa Stole the Precious Thing is a remix. Going on there. Mitrold is a remix. <laughs> oh, Mitrold, that's a really old joke there. Hey, the same way he's not gonna fall on me, thank goodness. That's what I think it is. Double jump! Yes! Woo! I thought I should. Ah, screw it. I'm just gonna brute force it! I didn't think both chandeliers would fall in a row. But at least for me. Like, the remixes that I love the most are definitely, like, the ones by my favorite circles, so, like, Active Neats. Because, like, as I mentioned out once again before, they cover either big, like, like, super, like, a Japanese swing, or full orchestra, and I can send links to them. Ah, stupid chandeliers. I can easily send links to them later, because they provide high-quality mitts, like, they provide high-quality mitts, and they are, like, any music uh, that goes up from theirs, automatic favorite for me, just about, no doubt. Okay, let's not die before we get to the Soda Machine now, Cruz. I died before I got to the Soda Machine, Cruz. What are you doing, girl? Ah, I found it. It's an epic remix of Cemetery of Nobasa Grave of the Bean. Ah, yes, yes, yes! Hold on, let me just slide past these here because I don't want to deal with them. <laughs> Let's live our days in a lovely cemetery. God. It's a, I can recognize a good amount of Toru sons just off the top of my head. And just always hearing the amazing remixes of them is super great. 
It's a 2D sound remix. I haven't heard that one specifically, so you're gonna have to definitely link it to me later. Here, back to the gameplay. Something that that the watchers may be seeing is this red smoke. What it does is that I've been trying to avoid it because, wow, it doesn't do damage me directly. If I stand in it, it will drain my time up to the point where I'm time paralyzed, as you saw, saw there. To the point to where how I can't uh, to I can't stop time at all, and it will take me time before I can even regenerate my time bar back. I have like tons of 2D sound and lots of other jazz arra arrangements. Um, if you know specific artists, do send them over to me. Because once again, Active Needs, uh, Swing of the Dead is super good if you've ever heard of them. And Marassi, Marassi, or rather I should say, always does lots of anime remixes, but has gotten, uh, has done a few Tohu albums himself, and he does Tohu piano tracks, which is some of the best, because he, oh, he's just a god at piano in and of itself. I definitely advise anybody watching to go listen to many of those artists around. We could always use more, <laughs> more people in the way. I have to grab my HDD off my old laptop, and it's mainly active needs. Yep, active needs is how it always is. And is there a problem with it? No, because active needs is amazing. They're one of the more dedicated groups that I've always seen. They're still at, posting actively. Actively. And just the amount of work that they put into their tracks, even like having Miku Miku dance re renditions of covers of their covers. Is like one link that they've gone to, which is just super magical. Okay, I can't reach that up there, I know for a fact. Not yet, at least. Freaking Mandragoas, I hate you. This is why we can't have nice things, because you guys exist. Get the heck out of here. You suck. I was introduced to them from the Chantai Collection OSD. Ah, ah, that's another name that I haven't heard pop in forever. I haven't heard or done anything with Chantai Collection in quite a while. I gotta say. Oh, new mechanic. Objects with purple auras can still move when time is stopped. Since we are progressing in areas, this is one new mechanic that we'll have to get used to seeing in not only the environment, but eventually enough, even with the enemies. Cruz, you just took two magic blasts to the face. Come on now. Hentai Tawachin. Only time I've heard that name it was in Hentai. I mean, yes, it is one of the... Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something real from you guys here. You know one famous website? Starts with N, ends with Hentai. Hentai Tawachin is, I think, the second largest parody value there. Only rivaled by the number one slot of... What else but Tohu, of course. Not kidding. You want proof? Watch it up on your own time, especially. But it's because of Zune's whole creative liabilities of why would you need to create your own characters when you have a whole world of Tohu girls? I repeat, girls, there's literally only one guy in universe, and that's Rinosuke. And, like, pretty much so. I was expecting a Zero Lane? Well, a Zero Lane's only popped up very recently in the past two years or so. Tohu has been, you know, a known quantity for forever. Chainsaw. One of the best. One of the best active items. Those Sun Knights are pretty good. But it's like, yeah, a Zero Lane's getting popularity, but you gotta remember, Chantai Collection was the OG before Zero Lane you know, got its own popularity. He spin! And even before that, Tohu has been around for quite a long time. Tohu is quite a lot of certain Nari, and well, another very interesting tad which will not be mentioned. I already know those. Those are known quantities. I think that Nari tad is like the whole wrestling thing that has like 17 different volumes, try not wild. Like, like that shows sheesh. People are really invested into it. But here, let's get on to our second boss fight here. We're about to fight one of the secondary protagonists of many games. Hey you, the maid! Freeze! Oh shoot. That voice.
Looks like you're having fun. Let me join in. Before I let you join, can I ask why you're here? I came to borrow a book from the library, and I heard Amelia is busy playing, so I'm breaking in instead. Don't worry, Amelia gave me permission. I'm just a vanilla boy trying to look for some wholesome stuff, and then the die is full of the opposite. It's a freaking shit, the witch that stole the precious thing. Yep, exactly. Exactly, Akane. <laughs> well, here's the thing for you as well, Alex. Uh, there's no wholesome tag for for Enhentai. There certainly is a lot of different sites that use it, but there's no one for wholesome exactly. But here, I'm gonna hook you up. Talk to me later. I'll give you the good details on the good ones. Now here, let's get back to this. Don't worry, Familia gave me permission. Hmm. <sighs> Why do you, Amelia? She has a bit hard for holding a thief like you break in. How rude to call me a thief. I just borrow things permanently. For those of you that don't know, this is Marissa Chirishime, which is who is the best friend of Reimu Hakure and usually the secondary protagonist in the Tohu games. While Reimu's bullets usually home in and deal less damage, Marissa's usually deal a lot more damage but do not home, forcing you to be a lot more active with keeping up in the Danmaku games. She's also a fan favorite because 1. Marissa Stole the Precious Thing is a remix, well, it's a remix of uh, Alice's theme, but Marissa is the, the main perpetrator of it. And also, Love Toward Master Spark is a hallmark within Tohu, uh, within Tohu as well. It's just a huge, huge, famous song as well. Search of Manoa, easy peasy. If only it was that easy. Oh, I'm freezing again a little bit. Well, time for some magic. Shazam! Give me two seconds here. Reimu is an extortionist? I mean, Hatori Shrine needs donations, but she's broke AF. All the time. Like, all the freaking time, she's broke AF. <laughs> One of the best Tohu memes. Reimu, broke. Neko made a Reimu. Neko made a Reimu. Neko made a Reimu. Neko made a. Shazam! Am I back? There I am. Alright, let's do this thing. Marissa's boss fight incorporates the new mechanics we saw, such as the red mist destroying your time, and also lets us use the chainsaw to the best potential. Taking something without permission is stealing, but good timing, I'll finish you off here. You're the one who's going down. It's gonna be game over. Here we go, Love Toward Master Spark, one of the best Tohu songs in my opinion, one of my favorites too. So these are easy graze points here. The main thing that you just have to weave around is knowing when you want to stop time, because since Marissa is always flying around, you're not going to have the most openings, like in other fights. The sheer amount of scenes about her getting money for the shrine on that end site is... lol. <laughs> okay, I'm probably going to have to slow time here so I can get in between the mini Hachiro. Gonna go all out. Eat this master spark. I'm ready? Oh, I already have about a third. But here. Even though I can stop time, the main thing you have to remember is snail time as well, which can save your life in a pinch. Especially for situations like those to where in a straight line, you're not gonna be able to dodge any bullets. Let's get some chainsaws on her too. I mean, I don't even remember who the most popular girl is on the end side, too. I just know that Toru Project has and always will keep that reigning throne of number one most parodies. Way in, Chainsaw! Way in! Woo! So I'm starting to run a little low in mana, meaning that I should probably use time more itself as my attacking factor, and you want to try to regen up more. Oh, another Master Spark! Oh, 
But the main thing that I, I uh, that you'll see the most Dojins off of, and keep it note, Dojins don't just pertain to that H uh, to the H term, but mean independent words, especially is Dojin music circles and words themselves. Tohu Luna Knights can fall under that basket of a Dojin word, an independent word made by the developers at Team Ladybug. As well as like active meets who are a Dojin active music circle. Oh wow, seriously? I'm so close to killing you too. Well, good thing I know how to use snail time because it's an easy grade for the master spark. This wasn't supposed to be like this! You shouldn't be able to use your powers. Really, I don't remember saying anything like that. Just uh Amelia tricked me. That was too easy on you. You're pretty good for a maid. Precisely because I'm a maid, I take care of my master's enemies with all my might. I told you I got permission. Whatever, you lost. So please be a good girl and go home. I went too easy on you, yet you treat me so coldly. It won't hurt to bring me a cup of tea or coffee. Unfortunately, I can't prepare such things in this fake world. Hm, fine. I'll take a look around this world before leaving. Goodbye. Boss 2 done. Imagine you can control time but you're still being self-conscious and use pads and stuff to compensate. Oh, what's up, Sapia? You are inviting the ancient old meme of knifed. Welcome back, 2007. Welcome back to the knife memes. Did you just watch same Sakia? Well, one old meme in the Toru fandom is that uh, Sakia, definitely her uh, her own bus size is not too big. And as such, it is a big meme that she uses pads to compensate. But seeing as how she can stop time, usually people get cut off dead mid-sentence before they can even finish what they're saying. Hence, knife. If you go back to any old 2012 genre um, YouTube videos, you can easily, like, super easily find any of the videos, like, any of the comments saying, Satya pads are knifed. Because they never got to finish their sentence. Yo, our keys means I can advance to the next area. Oh, yeah, Notori time. Gosh, my model keeps lagging on me. I don't know why. Okay, now it's going in hyperspeed. Is this better? Okay, now it's actually caught up with me. I have no idea what was going on with the model there. Seems my magic isn't good enough to project onto the big screen here. Here, give me two seconds. This is just annoying me because I want to actually be matching up. Shazam! I hide away, blindside away, seeing you where you can't see me. Someday will I reach out to you, my friend. I hide away, blindside away, to come out of the blue. Even if it's you, I'm testing these waters again. I hide away, blindside away. Is my internet being a jerk now? Are you okay, Akane? Things still going fine on your end, hopefully? Here, while I'm setting this up, I'll take this time to drink. Ah, no me mas. Sip, sip, stay hydrated. As always, whenever I do reach that affiliate status, of course, hydration station is gonna be one of my affiliate rewards. As always, a few other surprises, but that'll have to stay tuned. I'm about to call at t tomorrow because I'm only getting 500 of my 900 plus. Oh, I do hope you get that sorted out. Heaven knows I could always use better internet too, but who am I to say anything? It's, it's not the best anyway. 
fight at all. <laughs> Hi there. How have you been? Hey, Tori, what's wrong? You know, just collecting some jewels. By the way, I brought something good for humans. Take with gratitude. What is it? It's a shop ticket. Oh, yeah. She gives over a few free ones after every boss fight, I believe. Just run a very long ethernet cable and you can plug into my router. Oh, jeez. If I wish. I only wish. As you've seen, my internet is the bane of me. Now, I skipped past the dialogues and wanted, hopefully, I wanted to see if I can't finish this game in like the next hour or two. But you can actually call that shop, or you can actually use that shop ticket even during boss fights, which is super valuable if you need to get that extra flux of HP, or HP, uh, HP, MP, or time. Oh, I'm gonna take the hit. Uh, do you need the stuns? I needed to kill these boys. Never mind. I'm falling into everything now, aren't I? here. I already talked about like, you know, the basics enough of Tohu and the music, so I'll go on to the last topic and I'll let the time fill the void otherwise. But for rhythm games, Tohu has made its mark especially in the lights of- Aw, oh, darn you fairy mates. Oh my goodness, we don't talk about that. We really don't. But Tohu has made its own mark in the rhythm game genre. Especially when it has its own, uh, especially when it has its own genre, and a genre track dedicated to it, and many UI like, dance dance revolution and such like that. As such, it definitely has a huge wide cult following, and especially with the BPM and you know, meme ability of tracks, or you know, just common knowledge of tracks such as like Bad Apple, you and Owen was here, etc. You always see it floating around, and it's always if I see it in rhythm games, it's my go-to. Well, it's almost late for me, so I'm gonna head off to bed. You have a good stream, Cruz. You too now, Akane. Thank you for dropping by, especially after your own Fall Guys stream. Be it as it may with its hackers and whatever door. Since I'm in Central Time Zone, I've got school tomorrow, so I gotta sleep. I feel that enough too. I mean, I'm in CST as well, but I'm used like, but I usually w am waking up around time, which is why I want to finish this up at least by the hour or at the very most I'm always stopping my streams at least before it hits one o'clock itself but as well thank you for coming Alex with how my pacing has been going so far honestly I really don't think I'm gonna be able to finish it tonight fully if I want to do everything like all of the areas even in a casual playthrough because I've probably been taking it but We'll see how this goes. I might just finish this one area here, and then we'll call it a night. Yeah, because otherwise I have four bosses left, I believe. So I can, yeah, I can cut it half and half, is what I think I'll do. New warp area. New enemies who will charge at you, meaning that you probably want to use snail time as often as you want. Rhythm games, at least for the ones that I've played a lot of, I have my unending love for any cabinets that I can find at conventions or not. My, my favorite ones, I've got to say, would obviously be the ones where I can use my limbs themselves. Oh, by the way, that sign had a new mechanic, which is Anything highlighted in green only moves when you stop time, as opposed to purple, which move regardless of stop time. But um, going off of this, any like I love going out to conventions, like anime conventions for cosplay side of things, for instance. Also, if I can get my hands on any good cabinets that I can play at the arcades especially. Dance Dance Revolution is great, but I myself, I'm a bigger fan of Pump It Up, or PIU. That's just my own preference anyway. 
not to rag on DDR, it's still great too. I just prefer that five button way out, and I find doubles to be way more fulfilling. Where it's just like where you use both sides of the pad. Because it, it feels like it flows a lot better with how you have that extra button in the center and you're at the prime diagonals instead. Plus also, like, my arcade nearby has a, like, my, my arcade nearby has a PIU uh, cabinet instead of just a DDR, but that's just me, that's just me anyway. For mobile games, I am a big Rayard fan, so... Sidus games 1 and 2, Demo vo Vos, are all super great in my book, like top tier pits. For PC, I have played a good amount of like Os back in the day, or Osu, however you want to call it. I've played a good amount of Spin Rhythm, which has been the newest game that I got recently. I just got Muse Dash just a little bit ago. Oh, grips. Yes, I can finally stand the knives in stock time. Oop. Oop. Fantastic. Now I can access more areas super easily now. But that's mainly like a good extent of the games that I've played. As for other, like, going back to what I was saying about cabinets especially. Um... Being a percussionist, I am very partial to Taiko, even though it's just only Snare. It's still like, you know, it's still one of my favorite rhythm games there. Poppin' Music, uh, Juby. What else, what else? We also have... Mai Mai. And um, a few others that I've always put around at conventions as well. Um, Sound Vortex. There you go, that's the other one that I was trying to remember. I am very, I, I hold a special place in my heart for any cabinets that I get to play because of how, just how fun they are. How I like, rhythm games, you can always take the same charts of music and inspire new gimmicks off of them. Uh, whether it be you're stepping to the beat or like stepping to the beat and you're on your pad games for your feet, or for your feet and rides, you're moving along, making circles with like my my and such. You're swapping the buttons along with it for like Project Diva. And that's well, that's one I definitely failed to neglect. I uh, failed to mention. Um, you're like oh, just tapping along and making your own beats to go around with it, like Groove Coaster, etc., etc., etc. But rhythm games just encompass such a large variety of genre, and it's always just super cool to see how much influence they have, especially with like all the different gimmicks you get. Os, you play, uh, you play Osu, usually either like mouse and keyboard or stylus pen and tablet, and you're tapping along while actually like moving your hand to the beat. Spin rhythm I've been playing recently. You're playing along. Wait. Am I in the wrong section? Yes, I'm still in the wrong section. Spin your rhythm. You're moving your mouse actively to hit the notes while matching them up with their color, red or blue. Kind of Guitar Hero style. Guitar Hero itself is its own rhythm game. With the, with the five different frets, the whammy bar, and of course, like all the extra things that go with it. Rock Band. You are playing whatever element of the band that you want to go with it. Whether it be you are... The vocals, the bass, the guitar, drum set itself, all of those are super great. But once again, that's one thing I find fascinating is like how f how much rhythm games can kind of push each other to be unique. Because especially with like rhythm games, you're not going to be you know like you're not going to be well known if you're just the same two tap Sam as anybody else is. But the fact that like the the fact that so many of them just have way or like varying different mechanics that just make it all the more memorable to play them or like, you know have their own special spin on how you're going to listen and play this song is what always enraptures me and also helps me find so many many good new bops i wouldn't have found half the songs that i'd ever listened to if not for rhythm games or like half the artists that i'd listen to if not for rhythm games Okay, good. I made it to the save point. 
Oh, we sleep cheese in town here. But especially so, it's like the biggest thing I gotta say is for rhythm games, I see a lot of people like always saying it's like I never did music or so, or I like I don't have any musical background or so. I don't think I'm cut out for it. And no, rhythm games are actually a great way to help like to help a budding musical knowledge because it not only oh secret forget about this one not only gets you in a different mindset of learning the music itself. Not just a, like, it's a, it's a different way of learning, especially. You're not just learning how to do, not, you're not just learning how to, oh, press and make the beat, like, press and make the beat, like, in tempo with the song. You're learning a different way, which can, like, a different way of making that music. Whether it be you're tapping on, like, like I said, Project Diva, you're hitting, and you're hitting, making up extra beats for points in Groove Coaster. Or you are quite literally playing the instrument how it's supposed to be played, our rock band style, or just singing your heart out. The fact that it offers such a different wide variety of how you can, you know, make the music, make the rhythm, and make it work. Uh, game wise, please. It's just super, super cool. Because there's always going to be those new spins on everything. Trying to be the new fresh kid on the block. It's in the games. And it's not a bad thing, it's not a bad point that I'm making out here. On the contrary, what I'm saying is it's a budding market that keeps on growing and growing and giving, and I just love to see it. Now as for what I play the most of, it's mainly been like Citus probably has the most hours for a rhythm game that I've played before, but Pump is definitely where I fall in. I'm just gonna let the dialogue go through here. So, Notori is just telling us that if we hold the jewels, we get small passive boost. But Sidus especially, because both Sidus 1, 2, and all the Rayart games, excluding like, you know, their new, uh, the new recent points that they've been having, like Bose to Switch, Demo to Consoles, etc. stuff like that, have, all, have been mobile, uh, have always been mobile, and as such, it's just a huge thing for me to be able to just like, play and jam to one or two songs. While I'm uh, like, while I'm waiting at school or something like that. And of course, once again, cabinets, cabinets, cabinets. I'm never gonna let it go. Thousand and daggers, best, best consume, my uh, best uh, active ability to have. Darn it! That's a stupid hit. I hate the bubble fairies. Ooh, nice craze, cruise. Yeah, I'm just gonna abuse. Like, Cast and Daggers is the most broken um, ability in the game, and for good reason. But going on, uh, on to this, you don't like. I don't always have the luxury of playing cabinets, especially since Sidus is a one-time purchase. The only versus cabinets to wear at the arcades have to keep buying tokens and tokens and tokens to play and, like, to play and use them. Well, it's not necessarily the biggest problem. It's the fact that, you know, I'm barred by, like, having to actually go there and having the money to spare on the time. You know, it's a bit the conning factor of why, like, I can't grind out as much, even when I have, like, my own local group that plays pump with me. It really is a huge turnoff, unfortunately. Not to mention the fact that unless you go into a convention or have that arcade nearby, you're never, you're probably never even going to get to have that chance to play a cabinet fully. Okay, I'm just skipping past most of the dialogue here, but it's just some story stuff which I'll cover another time. And also, Akiu reminding us, basically saying, hey, don't forget about snail time. A lot of players do in this game, which is very bad because snail time in some situations is objectively way better than slow time. And the fact that you have no cooldown with it, and the only thing is you have to just prep it, 
by holding down your attack button is nothing at all, honestly. And that time is so negligible, and it goes such a long way to keeping you safe, since you can actually bo stole blue grays off of it. Perfect, more mana. And I'll pink grays off of you, thank you, friend. Now, can I still keep going this way? Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. This will be area number five. Not five, number four, so I'll go back this way for us, please. Spam the knives. Mac the knife. <laughs> okay, yeah, Cytus has always been my baby that I love. Oh, jeez. Run button. Oh, I'm at least gonna get my MP fully back from the end of this. I've always loved so much throughout because I spent so much time in all my schooling playing it, both 1 and 2, especially so. And at least for me, I didn't have, like, Demo is great, but it just didn't have, like, that same allure as Sidus because I played Sidus first. And those I just couldn't pick up because I was playing both Demo, Sidus 1, and 2 at the time, right afterwards. Now, as for cabinets themselves, I've been playing Pump for maybe about a good 3 years an hour or so. The difficulty ranges from 1 to 30 and you can find videos online, though you really never see anything past right the high 25s, but I can comfortably play like at my peak definitely around the range of a good, of a good amount of 19, 20, 21, so around the 20 range. Happily so. And this would be the ones that I consider myself kind of sure is at, because otherwise I'm just kind of meh at most of them. But here, 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 let's get on with the last segment for tonight. I'm going to beat our mysterious witch past this point, and then I'll go ahead and call it. Enter one Patchouli Knowledge, resident witch of both asthma and... Um, well, Magician, not Witch, rather, that's more, that's more Alice and Rissa's title, of Star Wars Double Mansion. Are you having fun? I guess. You create this world. It was Raimi's usual it's request. If it doesn't exist, let's make it. The Red and White Shrine Raiden gets upset if we try anything in Jin so so we created a separate space. I guess since it's been so peaceful, Raimi needed some excitement. If you, have, if you would have said so from the start, I would have played along. It's no fun if we tell you. The omen of surprise is what makes it exciting. That may be true, but I have plans too. Jamie's selfishness always pops up suddenly. You're right. Anyway, we're here, so we might as well have some fun. I don't mind, but is your health okay? There's nothing to worry about. Today is a good day. I'll show you a true bit of my magical powers. I'd go on and on about Patch. Instead, I'm just gonna sing out her personal song since a lot girl is gonna play up here in just a second. One of the few songs I do know. But her boss fight basically contains four different elements, and it'll be balancing that along with snail and witch time. Okay, I'm forgetting the words as I'm thinking. And so, the grasp of the elements I can construct a hold Within the delicate borders of a mind fit to my role Still, rising, falling, waiting, stalling Through the silence, hear me Calling the lock is broken with a single token The key is a word but not a word spoken Something secret urging me to read it Written in the language with no one to speak it It's coded in the air decoded just as soon Pure as the sun, elusive as the moon Strong as fire, pure as water surface Born as metal forged yet ancient as the earth Is a dusty tome Upon, upon which shall Spark my surroundings and not a thought of ever moving myself 
So, for the gasp of the empty breath that's caught within my chest, until from deep way within the G may then carefully be pressed. Beginning anywhere and never ending then. There is a cycle that turns the tide and recycles again. Words born of word and pass from paper disappear. Let the beating heart beats repeats to me just the right ear. Ah, oh, darn it. I'd say that was a pretty okay rendition. Me keeping it down low in the house means that I can't sing at full capacity anyway. Hey, that means more saving for the debut. Ah, time's about to comment, Chris. Your Grey's game was off the roof right there, girl. Trying soil time. I find Patch to be one of the easier bosses because, especially like for her water attacks, they're a lot more predictable and you can easily graze off of them super easily. Perfect, perfect. My throat's getting a little dry too anyway, so... I'm really going to just take it a lot easier than the talking, but I'm gonna finish off the stream here anyway in just a little bit. So here, we get the green key next, use its back, and once I get to the next save point is when I'll call it here for tonight. I am really feeling a bit on the tired side, so I want to get that rest. Come on, I'll use the soda Let me put it in the basket, please. Fit. And you know what? I'll call the podcast there. A lot shorter than the usual ones. But it's not too much, it's not too much of a big stream anyway. And so for now, thank you all for joining again, and as always, I'll be signing off. Everybody watching, whether you're on Twitch or YouTube watching the boss, do enjoy your time now. And it's Sharkers Grazi signing off. Have a great morning. Afternoon, evening, and night now. I'll come back with Lunar Nights in another time to finish off the second half.